everyone, I'm Luis Duarte, 3D artist, back again, and today we will see the advantages and a workflow for using the CC3 Plus models. To start, I'm going to make a really generic looking dude. To do that, I'll go to the Morphs panel, and I'm going to go to the bottom, where we will find the Ultimate Morphs sliders. You know they're ultimate because they look safari beige or khaki or whatever. They're different from the other ones. They're more ultimate. In this way, we can make characters way faster, and we can make them more unique and personalized across the whole body while keeping the process really quick and easy and replicable. Really cool. So check this out. We have lots of different bodies and lots of different heads. I'm going to make a male dude. And I'm going to accentuate the facial features a little bit. Likewise, I also want to accentuate the cavities or the concave parts of the head. The advantage of all this is that we can merge these different heads. We can combine these. We can mix and match these. We can do whatever we want. The world is our oyster. We can go up to the top. <laughs> uh, and up at the top, uh, we'll find some individual morphs. Using single sliders and in a more granular way, I can use the icons at the left as a clue to what it does and how it'll affect the model. This CC3 Plus update is pretty cool because the workflow is even faster at the bodybuilding level. It's just so fast and easy to kind of block out a representation of the character you want. You can get really close, like 90% of the way there, just using these sliders, and then customize further down the line. That's what this is about. Quick, iterative creation that looks amazing. Don't fuss too much getting everything perfect yet. Do that later. Tweak as needed. Right now, I want to see this dude with elf ears, yeah! Since this guy should be a, you know, a generic NPC or a background character, I'll build in a bunch of different features and add cool things to him uh, at the end of this masterclass. The last thing I'll do right now is start playing with the Headshot Morphs, which is crazy interesting because the Headshot Morph 1000 library lets us set and customize a thousand! I mean, who would have guessed? A thousand of the features that are on the face. Uh, in this case, the eyes. I mean, I'll do the brows a bit. Uh, and then search here for the eyes. I can make them a little rounder. So his piercing gaze can see into me and learn my secrets. I can deform each of the tiny little portions of skull and flesh that make up the face. Chisel that jaw. Do you guys have a chin? I don't have a chin underneath my beard. I make characters with chins and I vicariously live through them. I can make changes to the angle of the eyebrows. I can make changes to the depth of the eyebrows. Using these sliders is really intuitive. Basically, you just slide it left and right and you stop when you like what it looks like. That's all there is to it. I mean, hey, we're artists. That's art. Welcome to art. You're, you're welcome. That's your art degree right there. So if you don't have the ultimate morphs or the headshot morphs, uh, this is what they do and this is what they look like. Okay, the new CC3 updates actually make it easier to make use of some of the CC3 features that we don't get a ton of use from until now. And I'm going to show you how. Finally, I'll mess around with some of the nails morphs. This dude is going to be a demonic kind of guy, so of course he needs a manicure. One of the greatest improvements in this CC3 Plus update that represents a significant change at the character creation level, uh, and above all as a model, like as a work of art, is the changes to the topology. Character topology here is enhanced for a more realistic vibe, but it's also more usable and adaptable as well. So here, you can visualize, uh, here's some of the changes to the polygons like this. The facial topology has been enhanced for better expression. We can check out some movements and animations. This will give you an idea of why the enhanced topology in these areas is helpful and what that means for your characters. I'm going to open up the facial editor and start messing around with some expressions to show you. You know, he looks like he's wearing a superhero mask or something. Cool. Anyway, okay, we can uh, do the same thing with body poses. Let's go to the pose editor and check some of these template poses. 
Um, I just want you to notice how it's behaving in these colored areas, how the polygons are kind of folding, especially in the joint areas uh, or in areas where a real human might wrinkle or fold their skin. You're going to have a much better approximation and smoothing of the skin in these areas. The great advantage of all of this is that at the topology level, we can also improve our sculpting practices when you want to make changes to your custom characters. So. I'm going to load a traditional CC3 version of this male model. Boop. Pressing buttons. I'm going to go to the scene tab and select all his elements like his body and his eyes and teeth. I'm going to hit our handy go Z button and take it to ZBrush. And it would be the exact same process if you're using a CC3 plus character or a base CC3 character you translated to CC3 plus or whatever it is you've got. But if it's a CC3 plus character, you'll have extra options to select before you go Z. Make sure you select all six items there, including the new tier line and the eye occlusion objects. And we're going Z. I want to use A pose here rather than T pose. It's just more natural. In ZBrush, we can see in real time the effect the CC3 topology will have. Especially in joint areas, we'll have more detail. And especially, especially when we apply subdivisions. Yay, our favorite. If you subdivide the traditional CC3 character, you'd get some imperfections in the eyebrows and and stuff. And now all of that is a thing of the past. It just wouldn't make sense, right? It just would, you know, um, having extra polygons in some of those areas wouldn't really be natural. But now if you subdivide, uh, it just it's more natural and more expressive, even more so. Does that make sense? You got me? Okay, good. Now, when you're adding subdivisions and creating unique features in these areas, you won't get any wonky behavior or anything. It'll retain its expressive abilities which helps come time to animate and stuff. And it also helps when you're making normal maps. Normal maps, my favorite maps. Simply put, it's gonna improve the quality of our work and it's gonna make sculpting easier. Another really cool thing you can do is you can bring separate elements in individually. With GoZ, in this case, I go to select both the head and the arms materials. Keep it as A pose. And notice how in ZBrush, you can make changes to these pieces independently. This could be very helpful. If I wanna make modifications to one part of my model without needing to see all the others. For example, I can modify the features here. I can move some of the geometry around if I want. Change the arms a little could be very useful, especially if we want to add details and high resolution to a body segment. And uh, there's no need to bring in the entire model. To take it to Character Creator, just press the All button. And once it updates, back in CC3, you'll click on Update as well. And if you watch the tips of the ears, the deltoids, and the jaw area, boink, you'll notice the changes updated here as well. A pro tip for you is to add some details and perform some sculpting in high resolution. Here, I did three or six subdivisions. And we have different options. One of them is to export the maps. All the maps, the normal map, my favorite, which we find here in the bottom, we can create a normal map. But let's get crazy. Let's go to the Z plugin tab, Z plugin, the Z plugin tab and activate the multi map exporter. This option is very spicy because we can directly export all U space maps. We've got the normal map and everything. And of course, you can do that in a single format in high resolution from your high poly sculpt here. This is really useful because it has a lot of settings to get your maps just right, depending on what you need. You can configure each and every one of them and look for the route to save in. Once you choose where to save, wait a while for the computer to process. And once exported, just go to your model and character creator and the only thing left is to load them.
Remember to flip normal Y to better represent the stuff that we did in ZBrush at high resolution. And now we're back in CC3. We can do lots more to this character, so I'll see you in the next video.